So in today's short video, I wanted to discuss the admin accounts you get with a VMware SD1 solution. Uh, but in order to explain them better, uh, I wanted to emphasize how you can consume an SD1 solution. So as you might know, um, you have three components with uh, VMware SD1. You have the edges, you have the gateways and the orchestrator. Now, most of our customers go for the full-blown cloud version in which they host the edges, but then uh, VMware hosts the gateways uh, or the orchestrator. Now, in some cases, we have service providers who um, resell their own shared services out of their own data centers, um, and they choose to utilize the gateways because of their inherent multi-tenancy and their ability to easily point the customers in their direction. In this case, the customer is still hosts the edges, but the gateways will be hosted by the service provider uh, with VMware, again, maintaining operations of the orchestrator. Now, we also do have an on-premise model in which uh, the service provider can actually host both the gateway and the orchestrator. Now, with this in mind, you already start seeing that we have um, three stakeholders involved here, right? We have the end customers themselves, we have the partners and service providers, uh, and we have um, VMware. Now, this is actually the basis of the three account levels in the solution, right? You have the operator in themselves. Uh, they are the, at the top of the pyramid. Uh, and they are either represented by VMware personnel or service providers in case the orchestrator is hosted on premise. And they can create partner and customer accounts. Uh, they have the visibility um, of the orchestrator and how it performs. Uh, they can uh, define gateway pools because no customer is actually using all the 2000 plus gateways, they will use a subset of them called pools. They can define role privileges. So uh, in case a partner or a customer wants uh, bespoke admin accounts that are able to just do certain things, uh, the operators can do that. Um, they can manage the um, edge licenses and also the images. So in case there is a uh, new firmware upgrade, the operator can make it available for the partners to upgrade the networks and also manages the certificate system. So by default, you get certificates already embedded uh, in the orchestrator and all the other um, devices. But if you host the orchestrator on-prem, you'll be able to upload your own certificates. Now, going down a level, you get the partners. So the partners manage and create the customers here. They can grant access to different things such as, for example, VMware support. They can monitor events and help with troubleshooting and even offer a fully managed service. Now, by default, partners can choose uh, gateway pools that are set by the operator and assign them to different customers and even potentially request new gateways to be assigned to those pools. Uh, however, if the operator allows them to do so, the partners can create their own gateway pools, especially important if uh, they host their own gateways. And then you have the customer, right? Um, so obviously the customer will not be able to see any other customers uh, that this partner has. So they're all very, very separate, but it will only be able to see and potentially configure their own estate. Obviously, this doesn't stop here because each of these levels will then have sub roles in them. So although I don't have time to go through each of them, you'll see that, for example, for a partner, you can get things such as the super user. Uh, they will actually be able to manage and create all the other admins and basically do anything that a partner account can do. Then you can get the standard. So they will be able to read and write, but not create uh, new accounts. Uh, then you get uh, a business specialist. 
this is a person who for example creates and manages customer accounts but doesn't go in the technical aspects um, or customer support they uh, will be able to monitor the edges and uh, run troubleshooting um, tools.